what do you, what do you say to naysayers who are who are saying you're an influencer baddie who's now rebranding as a god girl because she's oh, getting I get older this all the time. she's getting <laughs> older it's just a rebrand this whole god thing is things that people do when they're realizing ah oh, i'm not that hot anymore i'm growing do you know what no, i mean no i hear you I've, i get that all the time but i always say i survived too many storms to care about raindrops <laughs> power <laughs> so there are aspects of my life um that i will never reveal um, that are between myself, my Is, family, and we became um, and who God. we are because of that past and that history. Mm. We became strong women mm. because we know who we are. Our fundis and all of that. I mean, I heard the, the audible voice of God. It wasn't the decision. It was the decision. Yeah. It was a that one, yeah. <laughs> like Christ Himself. What was that about? Yes. I don't even so know. I you can't know. just trust um, the person who was able to initiate a relationship with your husband knowingly and trust them with your life, with your kid. A fancy restaurant um, in a beautiful place in South Africa. And he left you with Love them. seven Love them. Foods, babe. He's not circumcised. I meant our sex. Our sex. I already do, do it. Like yes. Will it marry what you say you're doing? Which is so what, 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 what I don't like doing, mm -hmm. right, is spending a lot of time with my guests before we come on camera. Because I feel like you're going to tell me everything. Oh, but, <laughs> shit, yeah. So, for those who didn't know, um, B and I had a bit of tea, we had a chat, yeah. and now I'm already obsessed with who she is. So, I'll try my best for everybody else to be obsessed with who B is as well. Welcome to Engineer Your Life. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Finally. Finally <laughs> we've been trying. Oh, my word. The, the stars have aligned. Right? The stars <laughs> have aligned. The, the weather is a bit beautiful. Mm. So, I think we'll have a good one. We'll have a good one. Yeah, have an amazing one. I mean... Um, uh, uh, f f for culture purposes, who would you say is Bianca Naidu? Um, I know it's a difficult question because as humans, we're so layered. Mm. There is so much depth to who we are, but who would you say is Bianca? Bianca is an empowered, young, talented, I love myself, if you can <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, no, Bianca is firstly a child of God. Sure. Um, she is very rooted in who she was created to be. She is strong. She is powerful. Mm -hmm. And yeah, she's me. <laughs> I, I, I love the, the, the fact that you say rooted and the child of God. Um, it's something many people in their 20s no longer love to openly say. Mm. Uh, and in, sec in fact, people will always say, no, I'm just a spiritual being, mm. but not want to necessarily mention God. Why is God so important to Bianca? I think it's due to the fact that he's got me out of the darkest moments of my life. Had I not had a relationship with him, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Sure. I've faced near-death situations. I've faced suicide. And the only thing that kept me sane was prayer. So I always say I didn't find God. He found me in my darkest moments. Suicide in the sense that you attempted suicide on your own life? Yeah. Believe it or not, this yeah. put together person yeah, yeah. once was not so put, put together. together. I, I've always wondered, um, I've had another guest who spoke about suicide before, that what is the psyche of a person who takes that decision, who attempts suicide. What, what are you feeling? What is this insurmountable pain mm. that you feel? Can you put words to it? Look, some things can't be articulated. It just, it's just felt. But what I can say is that being in that situation and being close to ending my life, I see why so many youngsters do it. It's because you feel like you have no other way out. You feel like, for me, I felt like I was worthless. So what is my actual reason for being? Am I actually helping the people in my life? Am I making a difference in my partner's life? Am I, um, you know, making my parents proud? And at the time, when I was studying in, uh, in Cape Town, and I was studying dentistry, believe it or not, um, I felt like I was just failing in all aspects of life. And I think that's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to come and cloud our mind with negative thoughts and judgment and shame. And the more you hold on to it, it's like swallowing poison. Sure. And you're slowly killing yourself. And they say the first place that the enemy comes to attack you is your, is your mind. Mm -hmm. 
which is why so many youngsters suffer from mental health. And I think for me, I took the intentional, uh, or I made the intentional choice to change and to, to, to like better myself. So at the time I wasn't spiritual, I wasn't even saved, I wasn't Christian. Sure. But I was just searching for something to make me feel okay. And most people don't know this, but I resorted to alcohol, I resorted to drugs, I resorted to so many things to numb myself of what I was feeling. But I also resorted to God. Mm -hmm. I'm like, there's something out there that has to be able to help me. So I would find, I would find myself in church. I would go to temple, I would go to church, and I was seeking something. I wasn't even seeking Jesus at the time. Sure, yes, yes, yes. I was just looking for something to, to something beyond you. numb me, uh, to help me. Mm. And um, I had amazing spiritual encounters in Cape Town when I studied there. And these encounters made me realize that there is a God. Yeah. Because <laughs> it wasn't normal. It was very spiritual. And it happened for an entire year. And each time it happened, I didn't listen. I went back to what I was doing until the day I was about to commit suicide. And it was almost like a spiritual war where there was like, you know when they, when they tell you the devil and the angel's on your shoulder and the angel is saying, you are worthy. And the devil is saying, jump. That is what was happening in my mind right now, at the time. And I didn't know who to, to believe. And immediately, um, my partner at the time, Brenton, was in the house. And I wasn't Christian, but I went into the house and I said, hand me your Bible. And he looked at me and he was like, shocked. <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, I think I'm having a heart attack. I need... Please take me to Curtis Gear Hospital. I was having a panic attack at the sure, time. Sure, sure. But you obviously you, you couldn't understand what I was happening. I couldn't understand what was happening. Like uh, just now, I was about to jump off his. I was about to jump off his building. That that's what I wanted to do. That was what the enemy was telling me to do. And then I said, "Give me your Bible." And I promise you, I wasn't Christian at the time. He gave it to me. I touched it and I snapped out of it. I fell to my knees and I just began to cry and laugh at the same time. And now I know that's an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Then he thought I was crazy. I also thought I was crazy. Yeah, I yeah, was like, yeah. what's going on? And that spiritual encounter afterward, I just sat in the chair and I realized something very deep just happened in me. And that was a connection to God. And then I started intentionally going to church and I was like, okay, let's try out this thing. Let's see what it's about. Let me seek God. And the more I took like two cl steps closer to him, the more he came closer to me. Yeah, yeah. And it just became like a two-way relationship that I started building. And that was B 2014. On Christmas Day 2014, I ended up giving my heart to Christ. And my life was never the same. So when I say suicide is real, I felt that, that war happen. Had I not had the will and the... The, the, the power to seek God, I would have not, I would not be sitting here right now. It, it, it's, it, it's funny to me that you mentioned that um, w when you were on the verge of committing suicide, you, you touched a Bible, and in touching a Bible, you were able to feel that this spiritual warfare was lifted, mm. and you chose to live in that mm. moment, mm. which says to me that grace and mercy exist beyond religion. Because you had no religion, you religion. had no faith, no. you had no uh, encounter of giving your life to Christ, but mm. still grace and mercy came for you. That's the beauty of the God we serve. Yeah. And I think that, I think that youngsters, and what I realized, because I mentor a lot of women in, in business and in faith, is that we are carrying so much shame that we don't feel worthy to receive that grace. We don't feel like we're deserving of it. Mm. Um, so we shy away from it. We don't want to chase it. We don't want to seek it. We're, we're hiding like Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. They hid from God. And God is like, where are you? I want to find you. And they like, no, I'm feeling too ashamed. And God is like, but you're my child. I've created you in my image. And, you know, one thing that I try to do with women is place value on them. Because once you know your value... That is the key to unlocking the chains in your life. You realize how much you have to give to the world. I wanted to commit suicide because I didn't realize the value that, was, that he placed in me. 
until I broke that cycle of shame, then only was I able to step into who he truly created me to be. What do you, what do you say to naysayers who are, who are saying you're an influencer baddie who's now rebranding as a god girl because she's oh, getting get older. all the time. She's getting <laughs> older. It's just a rebrand. This whole god thing is things that people do when they're realizing, oh, I'm not that hot anymore. I'm growing. Do you know what yeah, I mean? No, I hear you. I've, I get that all the time. But I always say I survived too many storms to care about raindrops. <laughs> Power. <laughs> <laughs> and I just feel like, you know, being in, being in the media, you open yourself up to criticism. Sure. And no one's perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm an imperfect person seeking a perfect God. Yeah, power. I know yeah. I'm not this holier than thou Christian woman. I still yeah. want to look cute. Yeah. <laughs> I still want to go out. I still want to be me. Yeah, yeah. But I'm not trying to be something that I'm not. I'm just showing the world my relationship with God authentically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not covering up the fact that I go out for dinners to restaurants with a vibe. You know, I'm not saying all I do is go to church and read my Bible. Sure. No one's perfect. No person, no no individual ever walked this earth blameless except Jesus. Perhaps the mis the inverted commas mistake you are then making according to society is that you didn't wake up one day perfect because society is so fake in the sense that the journey with Christ is long. Mm. There's daily unlearnings. There's daily forgiveness that mm. you have to apply to yourself mm. and ask God for. Mm. And the difference that you are doing is that you are living it out in public. Yeah. The journey. Yeah. People love to hide the journey. And then when either they feel they've made it, they come out as perfect looking mm. or they will show perfection only mm. on social media. That, that's but I, in real life, they're living the journey. That's what I can't do is just show perfection because then how are you showing Christ? Because the Bible says, in my, through your weakness, you are made strong. Yeah. I'm a weak person. I'm not strong every day. Like we were just chatting right now. I had three hour and a half hours of sleep. I'm not doing this in my own strength, girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I also think that, you know, when people criticize you, it's not a reflection of you. It's a reflection of them. Mm -hmm. So when they say these things to me, I don't take it personally anymore because I'm also, like you said, on a journey of healing. And I know that we're at different levels of heal, mm -hmm. he being healed people. Yeah. And sometimes you get sitbacks. If you think you climb a 10 flights of stairs, you'll come back two down. <laughs> 100%. And which is why I have grace for myself and grace for other people. Sure. Um, you know, the thing about being a Christian influencer, being a boss babe, how do you balance the two? It's, it's not about balance because I'm not striving to portray an image. I'm just showcasing my yes, life. Yes, working towards who I am already. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the thing is, I know I was going to lose a lot of followers and I know I was going to lose a lot of engagement, which I have, by posting about my spiritual walk. But then that means that those are the people that are not for me. Yeah, Why yeah, are you yeah, even yeah. following me in the first place? They were place? not authentically your, for you. Exactly. So I know I'd rather impact two people in my day than impress 20 people. Sure. Yeah. You know, yeah, with yeah. a selfie. I'd rather impact than impress. And we had this conversation. The superficial life don't cut it for me anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like be two years ago, 100%. I want to be, you know with the who's who I want to take those pictures I want to be seen I want to go out and now I'm just like but what value is being at that event going to add to my life am I going to make connections yeah is it going to impact my mental health do I like those people am I being paid, <laughs> am I being paid? <laughs> to be there <laughs> you know you like, know so I've, I've like turned down so much in the past three months which I'm so proud of myself sure um, because you can't be everywhere and please everyone you can't you've got to fill you, your you own get cup. drained it's your draining. cup becomes empty very quickly and being in the industry that we're in yeah it's like you're giving and giving and giving um, I listened to a podcast where they said it's like you can't keep withdrawing at a bank because then you're gonna have no money mm -hmm. you're gonna go into overdraft so similarly with our energy and with our time it's like you can't keep allowing people to draw from you. Sometimes people are going to also deposit back into you. Yeah. So when I choose to be in spaces or around people or, you know, 
anything in general, a business meeting, I always ask myself, is it going to add value to my walk, to my life, to my business? Um, and if it doesn't, uh, boundaries. I I'm think just going to say no. <laughs> true. I, I, I want to speak further as a woman in, in your 20s, late 20s, that you, you speak highly of boundaries now yeah. and, and the right type of crowds. Mm. What is the importance of keeping the right company? Everything. <laughs> I think um, for me, I always say you surround yourself with five successful people, you'll be the sixth. You surround yourself with my sister-in-law and I were having this conversation last night. She yeah. was like, you surround yourself, you sit with five idiots, you are the sixth. <laughs> so I, I truly feel like your circle determines who you are, who you become. You know, there's this thing, show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Yeah, and yeah, our parents yeah. hop and hop and hop about right, it when right. we're teenagers and we don't see it yeah. then. In hindsight, I see it now and I'm like, the people that I surrounded myself with in high school determined who I became in college. Mm -hmm. The people I surrounded myself with in college determined the path I took as an adult. The people I spend my time with now determines who I become in business. Yeah. So it, it's, a, it's a domino effect. It's true. And you've got to make the right choices and spend time with the right people now or your future's doomed. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I think your network, like we were saying, your network is your net worth. And I truly believe like in business with the send with anything in my life right now, the people in my life has, have been my support, my pillar, my fuel to the engine. Um, and had I not had these people in my life, my mentor, my business coach, my spiritual coach, my partner, I wouldn't be this bee. Yeah, yeah. They've the boss created, babe. <laughs> <laughs> they've helped create environments for me to yeah. grow. Nurturing environments. Exactly. You know, they say you place one bad apple amongst 10 healthy apples, all the apples become rotten. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important um, who I choose to be with, who I choose to surround myself with, and which apples I place in my basket. But B, um, I, I, I found this, and I've had multiple conversations on that seat with women of color, and they say that they struggle to find support systems in other women of color. I mean, I know you're saying... <laughs> yeah, yeah, keep good company but what if people who look like me and sound like me are not being good towards me mm -hmm. so how do I navigate that yeah that's a tricky one for me hey um, in the Indian culture it's very weird because people want to see you do good but never better than them sure <laughs> <laughs> and it's like they say I'm also referring to the Bible here um, even, the, even Judas kissed Jesus' cheek mm -hmm. Jesus' cheek so sometimes friends can be enemies. Mm, mm, they mm. say a leader walks into a room and followers feel intimidated, snakes feel threatened, but other leaders feel inspired. And your energy will tell you, yeah. or their energy will tell you, if they're a follower, a snake, or leader. Yeah. And for me, I can pick up very easily when people are disingenuous. Um, it's a trait and it's a business tact, acumen, whatever you want to call it, that I think is very vital, not just with friends, but in business relationships. You've got to understand why this person is in your life. And I think it's very um, difficult, like you say, people of the same color, to work together. I find myself working with people of opposite color. To sure. me, it's, it's a weird... Uh, dynamic but you know we've got to break those cycles mm, it starts mm. with us I, th I think that people need to stop feeling threatened and start feeling inspired by each other because if we don't help each other if the pe if the minority don't help each other how are we going to progress or how how are kids going to progress mm, mm. you know so I I always try to come in the opposite spirit I always try to enforce collaboration if someone's going to be negative toward me I'm not going to be negative toward them because because two wrongs don't make a right. Yeah. Um, so how I deal with it is always coming in the opposite spirit. Um, I know when to feed into it. And, and, you know, for me, it's very spiritual because I'm like, why is this person acting the way they are? It's deeper than that. Yeah. They're unhealed. How can I help them? Sometimes I just step back and I'm just like, they're not my people. And I actually, it's not my job to help them. So I also got to be very tactful 
in who I allow, again, my energy to be given given to. Yeah, yeah. And if they're going to be shady toward you, girl, you're not Mother Teresa. You're not going to fix everyone, you know. Sometimes you've just got to take a step back. Um, but as far as I can, as much as I can, I try to enforce collaboration between uh, women of color. Because if I don't, who will? Fair. Yeah. I, I want to jump back a bit and just I want to close off this topic where you speak about th the pain that led you to, to wanting to take your life. Do yeah. you think you've been able to identify what was so painful that you felt like your life was worthless? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it goes back to my, my testimony of um, being pushed into a medical field. I come from a family of doctors and dentists and, you know, like in the Indian culture, you're either a doctor, lawyer, um, engineer, accountant, or failure. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I, I, was, I, I went into dentistry. I really wanted to become a doctor. Like being a cardiologist was a, a dream of mine since I was a child because of my granddad, he was very ill. Um, you know, I actually saved him from a heart attack once. Uh, my mom taught me what to do, and he had a heart attack in front of me, and I knew what to do. My partner had a heart attack three weeks ago, and I knew what to do. So I think it was in, in ingrained in me as a child, like, you know, serve people, help people. So I thought, what better way to do that than become a doctor? Um, did really well in high school. You know, I was a student, head girl, did all of those things because my parents told me to. But there was always a little bee inside me that knew that I had much greater plans and much greater purpose in this world. And, you know, when you grow up in a small-minded Indian community, it's like my vision for myself was so big that everyone's other, everyone else's vision fit into my vision. <laughs> That's how big mm -hmm, my vision mm -hmm, was for my mm -hmm, life. Mm -hmm. But I followed my parents' plan, and I found myself in dentistry. And I was so miserable. Each year, I did three years of it, I would get more and more and more depressed. By the way, dentistry is the, is the highest suicidal um, job in the world. Hectic. Did you know that? I didn't, it's yeah. It's dentists and then diamond dealers. Okay. <laughs> so don't ask me why. I mean, I can't tell you why because it is a very depressing field. You've got to have a passion for it. So I found myself very depressed. I found myself failing on purpose. I found myself bunking. Mm. I found myself with the wrong crowd. I found myself numbing myself from where I was in life, feeling unfulfilled, not passionate. You know, these things can put you in a place where you feel stuck. And I find that our generation, even now, you know, they study to become accountants, they study to become lawyers, and they find themselves stuck and feeling unfulfilled. And the more they fester and they sit in that, the more depressed they become. Mm -hmm. But we all have a choice. Yeah. Get out of it. Do something new. Why are you actually sitting in this, this place of being stuck? You have a choice. Um, so going back to the young me, I didn't think the way I thought now. So my only escape was alcohol and drugs and partying and boys. So all of those things are obviously unhealthy, negative, toxic ways to deal with the pain. And the more I dealt with it that way, the more difficult it was to become healed. Mm. Um, so I, yeah, I did, I did drugs and alcohol for about two years in Cape Town. My goodness. And that is mighty expensive. <laughs> I don't even ask me <laughs> how I even lived. Like, honestly, I look back now and I'm like, how? <laughs> what do we do? But, um... I was very naughty. <laughs> I don't even know if I should disclose it on the podcast, but I used to tell my parents, oh, textbooks, <laughs> and, you know, this and that and whatever. The classic textbook story. <laughs> so, and my poor parents, dude, now I give back my everything to them. Yeah, like, I yeah, yeah. I serve and serve and serve my parents because I, I know they paid, for, uh, they paid for, not even just studying in Cape Town, a place to stay, food, all of the stuff that I thought about now, I'm like, oh my word, I owe them my life. Mm. So, yeah, going back to um, how I ended up in that place, it's that I didn't think the way I thought now. And I thought the only 
way out was to numb myself, was to, you know, like dive into a toxic, you know, pool of... Narcotics. <laughs> yeah. And the more you deal with things in unhealthy ways, which is why there's such a culture of, you know, people want to party every weekend. They're just not dealing. They're not dealing. They're They're not facing. They're They're numbing. numbing. And it's very temporary. That's why it needs a a, a fix, a consistent fix. A constant fix. It's like, it's literally even going out is like a drug. It's like you want to go out to have this like feeling of like euphoria and then the next day you come crashing down and it's a repetitive cycle. And let me tell you. Side note, how horrible do you feel after going out the next day? Um, I, I think there's a friend of mine who's called it like post groove depression. Oh my God. It's, All of a sudden the next day you feel like, the groove oh, blues. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Um, yeah. So I think, but everything happens for a reason, right? I always say there's, there's blessing in the battle now that I see it this way, mm. which is why I try to speak to women and men and people who are in these situations to help them with, and this is the key word, perspective. You can see the situation for what it is, or you can see it for what it is not, and you can think, this is the way it is, this is the way it's going to be, I'm never going to get better, I'm always going to be a failure, I'm never going to see better for myself, but there's always a light at the end of the tunnel, and I wish, I wish, and I wish, and I wish, someone told me that. Someone came to little B and said, it's going to be okay. Yeah. No one told me that, which is why. And I think that God did that to me and he took me away from everyone. And he, he took me into a place of intimacy with him. I couldn't rely on anything or anyone except him. And that is how I overcame. Mm. But for many, there's still, it's, it's, I, I know friends that are in the same space for six years and sometimes they don't want to accept the help. There's only so much you can do. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I found myself in that space because of my unhealthy habits and I feel like young people need to know that there is a way out. You can change. Yeah. Change is the hardest thing in the world. If it was easy, everyone would be who they want to be. But it takes work. And there's a life coach that I love to listen to. Her name's Lisa Train. Mm -hmm. She says, it's about dealing with the sticky icky, right? It's about getting messy, Mm. getting into the messy parts of you. And people are afraid of it. People are afraid of the darkness. We're told as a child, the darkness is bad. We're told as kids to be afraid of the darkness. My thing is like, no, get into it, get messy. Go into, in the darkness is where beauty is found. If you think of a seed, and I love this analogy, how does a seed germinate? In the ground. Darkness. But also, what does it take for a seed to germinate? Water. Good soil. Good foundation. Sunlight. All of that. Exactly. And then that comes into the other aspects, like you said, your circle, um, your habits. What are you doing on a daily basis to get yourself unstuck? Um, you know, so for me, yeah, suicide is the best and the worst thing that could have happened to me because had I not gone through it, I wouldn't have been this person. So it's actually a blessing in disguise. The, the blessings in the battle. Okay. I, I want to move on to something that I feel you are very passionate about and you've mentioned it quite a few times um, as we're having our conversation is also I've seen it on, on, on your social media you speak very openly about your partner and the power of companionship, mm-hmm. that what good companionship can do to one's life. You, yeah. I mean, you also speak about your partner back then when you were still in a ditch and mm. you didn't know who you are and you were still searching. It means you guys have had a very long relationship. Yeah. Um, what, what, is, what, what does companionship to you mean, mm. especially with him? Sure. Big question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I always say that you have to choose your partner wisely because they represent you and companionship for me is, and I take it back to the Bible again, is someone to support you. For me, Mm -hmm. I want to be that rib to my husband. I want to be that person that's able to hold him up when he can't hold himself up. I want to be the person where he feels safe to be in my space and vice versa. 
Um, I think it's so important to have someone to walk this walk with you emotionally, spiritually, mentally, to be on the same trajectory as you. And for me, companionship means to be in alignment with that spiritual, mental, emotional um, journey together um, to become the best versions of yourselves. And I think that when your partner deviates from your values or True. deviates from right? your goals, yeah. then that's a huge red flag. And I mentor women in business, faith, and relationship. And when I see them seeing these red flags, I'm like, honey, are you, do you have like glasses on? No, they're seeing orange <laughs> <Are> or pink. <laughs> are you seeing orange? Yeah, yeah the I'm like, no. Green, like, where are you, where are you standing? They're like, come on, it's red, but it's not that red. You know, but oh, honestly, in the dating, I always say someone peed in the dating pool. <laughs> because this place is rough. If I had not been with Brent, his name's Brent. Um, he's my high school sweetheart. Like, our first um, date was in grade nine. <laughs> We went to a movie in Suncoast and then we went to the arcade. And we still go to the arcade and we reminisce about this. But I think for me, why I, I love this man so much and why I've loved him before I even met him was because of his heart. Mm. Um, so we had Mix It back then. <laughs> Do you remember yes, Mix It? Yes, we never Mix had, We never What had was your name when Mix It? <laughs> Binky Licious. <laughs> It was so silly. Um, yeah, so I, we, we journeyed together through everything, through the highs, the lows, the good times, the bad. And I'm so thankful that we grew in the right, in the right line. We grew linear and we didn't grow apart. Yeah. Uh, because so many people can grow apart because then they want different things in life. They become different people. Um, but I'm so blessed to have someone that inspires me to grow. And I feel like if your partner doesn't do that, that's also a huge red flag because what, how are they impacting your future? How are they impacting the future, the future you, the future Bianca? I don't want to be the same person in the next six months, but is my partner also going to be on that journey with me to becoming better? And mm -hmm. if they're not... You're going to find yourself in two different spaces in six months. I feel like values and boundaries and, you know, um, just overall ideologies are so important in relationship. Have a lot of people deviated from their own life purpose because they are with their own partner? 100%. They find themselves in these toxic, you know, there's something called Stockholm Syndrome where you fall in, in love with your abuser. Mm -hmm. I mean, emotional abuse is abuse. Yes. And the thing is, they get this temporary sense of satisfaction and love. And it's, it's heartbreaking because everybody wants love. Everybody wants to feel seen, heard, valued. Um, and for, for some women in my life even, I see them getting this temporary hit. It's like what we talk, spoke about, that the groove blues. Mm -hmm. It's like you get this temporary hit and you're on this high. And then the next day, they completely disregard you and ignore you because you're dating a narcissist and you just don't see it. Yeah. You know, um, red flags are so important, ladies. So when you see it, believe it, and believe a person for who they are, not what they show you. Um, for me, that's why I said I fall in, fell in love with Brent, because he showed me who he was before I even met him. I heard things over the phone that made me fall in love with who he was. The way he loves people and the way he loves God showed me that he was a man I can be with showed me that he was a man that can lead my family, that can lead my kids, that can teach me how to be a better woman. Um, and for me, that's very important in, in relationship. That's very important to future Bianca. Does long love ever become painful, though? In what sense? Maybe painful is not the word. Does a, a very long-term relationship like the one you've been in have moments where you like, I am tired of this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. That, but that's what marriage is as well. It's true. You know, it's never going to be a smooth sailing road because how do you grow when everything's good? You have to feel discomfort to mm -hmm. grow. Nothing grows from comfort zones. So even with Brent and I, we fight over the dumbest shit, honestly. Mm. We fight over the remote. We fight over groceries. We fight over silly things. But it's how we overcome it. That's important. Yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes things like 
shit hits the fan, mind my friend. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes I want to throw in the towel. But I think it boils down to how much you love and value that person, how much you're willing to fight for um, that love. Also, not fighting for the wrong reasons. If someone's disrespecting you, if someone's not respecting your boundaries, if they're, again, not on the same trajectory as you, then I feel like, you know, there's a saying called dropping the glass ball and dropping the rubber ball. Is it dropping the rubber ball or mm -hmm. is it dropping the glass ball? Mm -hmm. Dropping the glass ball is disrespect. Mm -hmm. It's cheating. Mm -hmm. It's lying. It's manipulation. Mm -hmm. But dropping the rubber ball is, you told me you're going to buy groceries. Mm -hmm. No, you told me you are going to buy groceries. True. You know, so in Oh, why did you take my car and put petrol? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you know what I mean? You know, so there's, there's, there's levels to True. these fights. And I think that with Brent and I... Um, communication is key and I learned this very late in life because I come up from a family my parents never communicated well mm -hmm. they fought and all I saw was this toxic way of dealing Bickering. with situations so that was me early onset in the relationship I will not joke with you I was not a saint I would scream I would throw shit I would fight but as I grew older I'm like Girl, you gotta get your shit together. Yeah, this yeah, man's gonna yeah. leave you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta stop being your mother and start healing your inner child and, you know, start being better. Start showing up better, not just for him, but for yourself. And not to say we're blaming our parents, but the, 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 the type of environment they grew up in, furthermore, the pressures they were under, the oppression they were under mm. because of political forces, mm. the government at the time, yeah. they didn't have good learnings. They, yeah. they weren't learning anywhere that 100%. this is how you communicate. This yeah. is how you become a good parent. In fact, what's on TV is people who throw tantrums. Yeah. On TV, that's how it's displayed. Everything is dramatized, you know? People are not shown sitting down, mm. holding hands mm. and saying, baby, I didn't like that. Mm. Please don't speak to me like that again. And baby saying, I'm sorry, babe, I won't speak to you like that. Mm. Which... As a, he a person who's working towards healing, that's how you resolve issues, yeah. you know? Yeah. No screaming, throw glasses, yeah. you know? Look, 100%. And I think I always, there's a saying that says, now that I know better, I can do better. And our parents didn't know better, mm -hmm. which is why I have grace for them. Yes. You know, um, there's, also, there's also a different way to look at it and say, oh, I have victim mentality. Mm. I am who I am because of my mother. Mm. You can't say that. And then you dwell in that forever. And then you dwell in that. <laughs> and, I, and I always say, I think people look to blame other people too much. And then they, they waste energy, they waste time blaming other people yeah. as opposed to just looking inwardly and saying, okay, let's do things differently. So with me, um, I mean, I'm still not perfect in the relationship. I, I'm the one that instigates fights. <laughs> my poor man, I will raise my hand and say... A woman who admits such, that. <laughs> he, is, he is actually God sent and I don't appreciate him enough. I don't tell him I appreciate him enough. But he's just so tactful in the way he handles situations, in the way he communicates. Because I'll admit, parts of him are more healed than I am. Mm. Um, but it takes two willing people who are broken to want to heal and be better, not for ourselves, mm. but for our future generations because we're going to leave a legacy. We're going to break generational curses. We're going to break generational cycles. And in order to do that, we need to show up now for ourselves and for each other. So he's great. I can't wait for you to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> you, you spoke briefly that you, you only spent three years in, in, in dentistry. I'm yeah. assuming, I mean, it's clear as mud, <laughs> that you eventually left that mm. to pursue this career in, in media and now you're running a, an, an advertising agency. You can mm. correct me. Yeah. Is that what you call it? Yeah. Um, you're running an advertising agency, which means your life completely shifted. Completely. It, it took, it, it took a, a, a new turn. Yeah. Um, what made you leave, firstly? Mm. Uh, and, and just take me through the journey of how are you here now instead of being in a practice as Dr. Naidu. <laughs> God. <laughs> like, I'm just like, I count my lucky stars that I actually had the courage because mm. it took courage and bravery to go to my very strict Indian parents and tell them, I'm not living your dream for me. They kicked me out the house. Really? <laughs> they literally kicked me out the house. My mother was like, okay then, you go pay for your own studies. 
go get married and wash pots. I kid you <laughs> not. That's what she said. And um, you know what? I thank them now in hindsight. And this is why I, I speak to younger women, kids in school. Don't take what your parents say for granted. True. Um, as much as, yes, I also tell parents, don't control your kids to a point where they lose themselves. Mm -hmm. Like there needs to be a very good balance. But... <laughs> Most of what parents say is informed. Exactly. By experience, deep experience. And all they want is the best for us. Yeah. You know, and the Bible says, honor your mother and father. I was a rebel child. <laughs> I, like my mom and I never had a good relationship for a long time. And I can speak openly about it now because we have the best relationship now. I can call her anytime. She's the first person I want to tell when something good happens, mm -hmm. you know, and it took a long time to get there because I had to realize, like we were saying, they didn't know better. They didn't. The um, system was created for them to be oppressed in their exactly, thinking. Exactly, exactly. Um, and she's now intentionally trying to be a better person. So even if you were my worst enemy and you did me so dirty, if you are intentionally trying to be a better person, I will have grace for you. I will actually invite you into my space. I will help you. But um, going back to dentistry, sorry, digressing. Um, I decided, you know what, B, there's more for you. Mm -hmm. You can't be sitting behind a chair cleaning someone's dinner for breakfast. <laughs> for breakfast. When you put it like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I, I, no, no disregard to dentists. Like literally half my family are dentists. They're brilliant at what they do and they're making a lot of money and they're successful. And I look up to them in so many ways for persevering, mm -hmm. but that was not me. Yes. My passions, my talents, my giftings were in a different realm. And I feel like I always, like lots of people call me the plug because I'm able to strategically partner people and brands, brands of people. Um, one of the philosophies of my company is we build brands, but we build people. Mm -hmm. So my clients actually become like family be it corporate, be it small businesses, be it medium businesses, I try to impact in every single aspect of my being. Had I been in dentistry, I feel like I wouldn't have had as much impact. I didn't know that, but I always say God did. He knew what my giftings were. He knew where my talents lie. And I think, again, it took bravery, it took courage, it took knowing who I was, getting to know Bianca, what are her talents? Where does she see herself in five years? And how am I going to get there? And I looked to the future and I said, okay, cool. I was working for my cousin at the time who played an intrinsic part of who I am. Um, ever since I was, say, 16 years old, my parents would make me work for him during the holidays to earn some money. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that working for him in high school was actually little business school. baby steps. It was business school. To become yeah. this person. Yeah. He has a company like mine, but on a bigger scale. And he focuses purely on like eventing and, and, and that aspect. He's one of the most successful people I know. One, one of the most successful people in KZN, yet you don't know about him. And that for me is humility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that also, It's not about him. It's no. about the work and the company. Exactly. Him and his wife are such a powerhouse. And I look up to them because... It's not about posting what they're doing on social media. It's not about um, doing it to impress people. It, they, they're doing it to build a future and a legacy. And that's what he instilled in me. He taught me how to cost clients. He taught me how to run meetings. He taught me how to run a business from 16 years old. Incredible. And I didn't realize I was learning all of these business acumen and it was going to impact me now in, in, in life. So he was, uh, him and his wife actually, my mom kicked me out <laughs> and I was staying with them. And I remember it was 2014 and I was in, he's got a beautiful house. Mm -hmm. He's just, he's building a hotel in, in KZN now. That's how <laughs> like amazing he is, right? Uh, but a at the hotel. time, yeah. I've, I've seen their journey though. He comes from humble beginnings. I mean, our family was not like super well to do. We come mm -hmm. from humble families and small communities and we just worked hard. And... Um, he basically taught me everything I need to know in business. And he basically told me, B, if you want to be happy, 
you got to pursue what you're good at and run with it and pursue your passion. And my passion is people. Mm -hmm. So I decided, okay, what kind of realm do I see myself in? I want to be in the media. I want to be in an entertainment. My sister, um, my older sister, also played a, an intrinsic role mm -hmm. in, in the journey. She's in media. And I saw her life, but I saw it for the glitz and glam. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I want to be like her. You know, I want to go to Calvin Klein events. And I want to, yes, you know, yes, that, yes. that was young B talking. So I was like, H what's going to get me there? Oh, okay. Marketing. Oh, okay. Um, you know, media. So he basically told me about a school called Vega. I went School of branding. Yes. yes. I went for the open day and I found my people. And two days before my mom was going to send me to Pretoria to do optometry, <laughs> he sat her down. He sat her down and he was like, look at your daughter. Look how unhappy she is. Basically, you're going to lose her if you let her go to Pretoria. So this was switching you from being a dentist to an optometrist now? Yeah. So she still hadn't given up. She had not given up. <laughs> this woman. <laughs> Look, my mom has like four degrees to her name. Yeah. She's a medical professional. She's amazing on what she does. But guess what? Now she wants to get into business. So <laughs> like, Look how the tables have turned. She's like, be, um, help. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I found myself in Vega, studied brand strategy for three years, loved it. And what I love about Vega, and I would, I would advocate for anyone to study there, is the practicality of what they do. In second year, they throw you into the deep end and they put you with corporate companies, ABSA, huge, huge conglomerates. Um, and you're, you're taught to build your own agency. And it's called Brand Challenge. Mm -hmm. And they take you off campus and they basically put you in a group of like six people. You're a brand strategist, you're a creative strategist, you're a copywriter, mm. and they put you into a power team and you build your agency. And when I had a taste of that, I was like, it was an aha moment. I and I was like, me. this is what I want to do. And ever since I was a child, I've always been, you know, the game, follow the leader. I was the leader. <laughs> I would make my neighbors like follow me and like, you know, do little things. So I, I always had this little knack of leading people. So even in brand challenge, I was the leader almost. So that taught me how to run an agency, how to be um, authoritative, but also on the level of a uh, on the level of the person that you're working with. So you're not above anyone. I always believe in my my company as well. There's no hierarchy. True. It's a linear mm. form of communication. I am not your boss. Think of me as your business partner, as your business associate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, We're working mm -hmm, together mm -hmm. for a common goal. Yes. Um, so yeah, I, I I used what I learned as a child, as a teenager, as an adult in business. And, and these little things we don't realize that we, we develop as children actually impact us as adults. You know, they say things that happen to you as a child only manifest in your mind as an adult. Yeah. Similarly with your traits and your talents. That's why I always encourage parents to develop the child's talent and not overlook it. If they're a good dancer, send them to dancing school. You know, if they're good um, communicators, send them to drama. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I used that to my advantage. And I started Ascend in 2017. No one knows this. I started it in my second year of brand strategy. Um, but it only really kicked off during lockdown. So it's been a journey, but I wouldn't change it for the world. I really wouldn't. Uh, we, we're nearing the end of our conversation, but I do believe we need a part two because... <laughs> there's um, so much to talk about. There's so much to talk about. And, and I want the part two to come when you, when you do that book because I'm uh, challenging you to release that book. I mean, we deserve so that book it's on strategy, so on networking, on brand development. Oh. We absolutely deserve it, especially because we've become, we come into an era now where there's a lot of personal brands mm. and a lot of us uh, have talents, we have skills, but we now need to package them as brands that are viable, mm. you know. Mm. Uh, it goes beyond just big corporates being brands nowadays. Mm. You, you find small people yeah. 
who are individuals becoming a personal brand. Mm. Um, something I like to ask my guests before I, 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 I end the show is, what do you know for sure in life? And you're like, this one thing I'm certain about. I have to take it back to scripture. <laughs> it's that I was created on purpose and for a purpose. And nothing is going to take that away from me. If It almost drew me or yeah, drew me to death, not knowing my purpose. And now it's pushing me to life. It's pushing me to want more for myself, for my community, for my family. So I'm a child of God. I was created on purpose and for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make an imp imprint and impact in this world. That's one thing I know for sure. <laughs> Where's my camera? There. Her name is Bianca Naidu. <laughs> She's a person of impact, a person of influence, as you've heard. Um, there's nothing to doubt about that. Funny, she hasn't even reached her 30s, but she runs a successful business. Some of the biggest names you know, she's behind them and has curated what their brands are and what they continue to be and continue to grow to be. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to join as a member so that we can continue bringing you more incredible, insightful conversations. I'll see you on the next episode. Click the join button and become an engineer your life member.